Hi everyone, today we will start with the crafting system. In this part we will start designing the widget and I will show you how to use the font icons. Here's a quick preview. When I press C, my movement is blocked and I have five buttons here. The first one is a Google font with icons and the others are simple icons I made myself for you to use. They are not the best, but feel free to use them in your game. Before we start in this video, I try to be a bit more detailed and that's why it's much longer. Also, it's only edited once, which makes it a bit worse in quality, but it allows me to make a lot more videos with less effort. In the end, it's just a test and I would appreciate your opinion in the comments below. Thanks in advance. Enough talk, let's start. So the first thing we want to do is create a new folder for all the things relating to the crafting system and inside here we want to have an actor component we call this ac underscore crafting this will handle all the crafting stuff and after that we go to input actions and we create a new input action this one will be ia crafting and we will add it to the imc menu controls Click on the plus, select the crafting and then click on the small button here and then you can press on your keyboard the key you want to open the crafting menu. I press C and then we save. Next up, let's go back to the AC crafting and open that one up. Click on the full a blueprint editor and inside here, get rid of that and then let's search for the IA crafting. This one and then from the uh, completed, we want to have an is valid, which we'll be using when we create the widget. And if this widget, which we're gonna create in a few seconds, is not there, we want to create a widget. So yeah, let's first go ahead and create uh, the widget. Inside here, create a new folder called crafting. And inside here, we want to create a widget blueprint. W B underscore crafting menu or something like that. Open it up and let's add some image so we can debug if it works or not. But first we need a canvas panel and then we will add an image to it. Click on the image and set the anchor to full screen and zero those values out here like this. Click on the image again and now let's search for the background from the inventory system. But I will also link the files again in the description of this video. Okay, after that we can go back to the AC crafting and inside here we can now select the WB underscore crafting menu and we can promote this to a variable. Something like crafting menu a reference. And here we want to get this one in so we can check if it's already there or not. And if it's not, it will get added to the viewport. So now we can add the widget to the screen, but we also want to remove it. So from the is valid, we want to have a branch where we check if it's already visible or not. So search for is visible. And if it's not visible, we want to add it to viewport again. Actually, we don't need to do this. We can just um, go in here and connect this one in here like this. Then here at the bottom, we also want to set some uh, things. So get the player, player controller. And from that, we want to set the input mode to game and UI. And the widget to focus will be the crafting menu. And then we want to set show mouse cursor. And uh, click on the true. And last but not least, we want to set the visibility 
at the first run it will be visible, but uh, when we toggle and we go into the top branch, we want to make sure that the uh, crafting menu is always set to visible when we want to show it. Because in the true branch, we can copy this one here and we can here get it to hidden or collapsed. I prefer the hidden one. And then we can get the player controller again. Uh, we can set the input mode to game only. And the uh, show mouse cursor to false because we don't want to see the mouse again when we hide the crafting menu like this. So let's have a quick test. Does not work. Let me see why it doesn't work. And that is a good example so I can show you how you can debug. So I click here on the is valid with F9. So we get the small dot. When I now press play and I press C, I see that nothing happens. That's telling me that this one will not get triggered. And one thing I forgot is to add the AC crafting to anything. So this is just a actor that doesn't exist somewhere. So we go to the character and we want to add the AC crafting here. Then we can compile, save and play. And when I now press C, you can see I break to this point. And now you can press F10 or F11 to go further and you can see where you get your problems. One small thing I want to mention here is also you can always hover above the return values and you can see what the values are. This is pretty handy when you have some problems with your system and it does not work like mine. You can always use this debug system to yeah, debug everything. This is just a quick note. Uh, I will make a video someday about it in depth. But uh, yeah, this should not be the topic of this video. So let's continue. Click on the as valid, press F9 again so it gets away. And now we can see that this works. One thing you don't see is that the player, when I go into the menu, can still move. So let's work on that. For that, I always use also the player controller. So let's see which player controller is used in here. So if we have the PC game in here, we can browse to it and we can go into this one. And you can see here we have our mapping contexts, which we registered in the inventory series. If you don't have it like this, you can just uh, create a new one. Should be pretty simple. And we added a register context and a deregister context. And we will now use that to remove the possibility for the player to walk. And how we do it is pretty simple. We go in here after the show mouse cursor. And inside here we get again the player controller. Let's get it here. And then we say here we want to deregister. Sorry, my bad. We want to cast to the PC game first. You can also use interfaces for it, but um, I will not do this here because it takes a lot of time to do it. And I guess this will be a long video anyway. So let's just skip this, but you can do it in your uh, version of the system. So connect them both. And here, IMC default. Inside here, we have the game input, the IMC menu and controls. You can go to the top and see, search for default. I don't know where I parked that one. Let's see, there is the IMC default, third person input, okay. And here, move, lock and jump will be disabled. And if you want to see if it really works, you can adjust Set here everything to 15. So we have a small window where we can see what happens. And I uh, press W to move. And you can see here at the sidebar that I'm currently not moving. And you can also see that I can't move now. So what we miss here now is uh, the register context again. Let's go back to the AC and copy this one. And inside here. We can, after we show the mouse cursor again, we want to add a register context. 
and we set it again to IMC default. So we remove the IMC default uh, here and we add it again. And what it does should be like this. You can walk, press C, you can't walk, can't move. And you press C again. Oh, I forgot to set this to false here. And when you press C again, you can see I can move. The next step now would be to uh, design the widget. So let's do this. I'll go to the crafting menu and inside here. First, we want to have the top bar, which will be a horizontal bar. I put it in here and we want to anchor it over the full top size. So we get like zero everything out except for the size Y. I will use here 80 and then I will get an offset left of 100 and also from the top 100 and then we also need on the right side 100. So now we have a small window where we can uh, align our items in. Inside here we want to have a size box and this size box gets a width and height override of 18 like this and inside here the first one will be an and button so search for that and inside here we want to have a text like this so I will just make here an A for all and then let's design the button open the normal and inside here we want to have rounded box that is correct let me close this, open the outline settings, 666. And then on the width, we will use two. And then we want to get rid of the tint. Let's get here some dark color. Maybe we add some like this, something like this. Press OK. And now what I like to do is copy this one, put it into the hovered and to the paste, pressed, sorry. And inside here, we can just make it a little bit darker. And when it pressed, maybe we make it also a little bit darker, but also maybe a bit bluish, something like this. So we can test it out. As you can see, it hovers. And when I press, it gets a little bit lighter. For the first icon, I want to show you how you can use the material icons by Google to yeah, browse the font as icons. So for that, open uh, a browser, search for uh, material icons download or something like this. Go to the Google Fonts site and inside here, you can go to the GitHub repo and you can see here all the source of it. And I will just take here the font. You can add all of them, but I will just use the material icons outlined regular OTF. And you can just download the uh, raw file. Back into the Unreal Engine, I will go to MISC and create a new folder here, which is called font. Inside here, you can now uh, drag and drop uh, the material icon outlined regular OTF. You click on a yes. And then it creates this regular font for you. You can save everything. Click on this uh, font. And then under font material, you should be able to search for material icons. Uh, sorry, under font family, you can search for the material icons, a regular font. This one. Like this. And if you have this weird shape here, you can scroll down to the localization. Where do we have it here? Open the advanced and then text shaping method. We want to full shape. And then for example, we can go here and type something like lock, which is the lock. And the words you have to type here uh, are find, found in on the website. So inside here, you can, for example, search for the menu apps, something like this. And we can scroll down here to the inserting the icon into the span. And here is the word you need to have, for example. 
So we want to have apps like this. I will increase the font size to 36 and I will align it into the middle and then I will get a little bit gray color so it matches the border here like this. And for the next icons, we just copy the size box, paste it in again, and we remove the text. If you want, you can uh, leave it with the text, but I want also to show you my images. So like this. And before we continue, you can extract the crafting icons from the video descriptions. Uh, they are pretty simple. I just made them with affinity. You can uh, use them for free. Mark them, go back to the engine, and then let's pull them into, let's see, I will create here a new folder, or no, maybe, maybe it's better to have it inside the crafting. So here, let's pull them in, you can see import done, and then let's set this image here to the armor, like this, and then we want to increase the size. I think something like 64 should work. Then we have to remove the padding on the side like this. And also, well, let's see, middle aligned, a little bit stretched here. I forgot to remove the padding inside. So we have here a normal padding inside, which we can uh, decrease to zero or to other values and now you can see it's perfectly aligned in the middle like it should now you can just copy and paste it here and change the images to something like search um, to the apple which is consumable i guess consumable yep and then we have a resource which we currently not have implemented but yeah here we go we have the filter activated or implemented and that should be it for this video so we have here now our menu buttons and in the next video we will add the crafting items so that we can see the items that we can craft here thanks for watching and see you in the next one